Greetings, members one and all of the Salivation Nation. Visualizing $10 plus trillion dollars worth of global economic relief or stimulus money compared to gold. Let's explore. <laughs> That's right, demonocracy.info has finally, after many years, came out with a new infographic. I think this one is quite telling um, how our money has been spent around the world, especially here in the United States with the CARES Act, as we try to recover from the coronavirus pandemic. <clears throat> and before I get into this, you know, many times in my videos when I mention the pandemic, uh, the coronavirus, it triggers some of my viewers. You know, um, they either say it's a complete hoax or they think that I am a member of the deep state or something of some sort because I acknowledge it. Make no mistake, you know, I certainly question the way it's been handled, not only by our government and by this administration, but also by the detractors and by uh, other aspects of the government, the media, and the like. There are many questions behind it. Uh, I'm not accepting all the information as, a, uh, as you know, the absolute truth, but make no mistake, I believe that there is an actual pandemic. The virus is real. I've seen it touch uh, uh, friends and family in my life, and others in this community have as well. But uh, that does not mean that I... Uh, except whole cloth, the uh, what everything the media tells about it, or and everything, but it is a, a serious problem, and, and it has and does affect the economy, and uh, it has been the talk of most of uh, the world for the last several months here. You know, this is a, a global thing. This is an unprecedented situation, um, and uh, when I talk about it, I try not to get into the minutia about my personal feelings about it. Uh, I try to talk about it in relation to how it's affecting the markets. And uh, it's obvious that it is affecting the markets. And this is one example of it here. Ten plus trillion dollars here. of Global economic money printer stimulus. Now, this is something that uh, is regards to a collapse. Well, has the economy totally collapsed? No, but we're in a world of hurt around uh, the, the world. And uh, they're doing everything they can in some ways are causing doing more harm than good in many nations with what's known as modern monetary theory. Um, I've also talked about what I think would be a better way to handle some of this than what uh, has been proposed out there. Uh, there's a lot of criticism of the CARES Act that I've talked about on this channel and the like and the ways to be able to help uh, keep businesses afloat through this and uh, while preserving uh, the free enterprise system. But nonetheless, they're just throwing money at the problem. And it's not just the United States, it's many other nations around the world and here, the European Union as well. So here we go uh, from this uh, infographic we see, a $100 bill. Now they're talking about here how it's the most counterfeited denomination of currency in the world. And uh, so that is something to be considered too. How many counterfeit $100 bills are floating out there? Uh, some say that the Chinese or the North Koreans make um, very good copies of the $100 bill. Somehow they've gotten a hold of a plate or something like that of a $100 bill. Um, who knows? But nonetheless, here's what $10,000 look like in $100 bills. It's enough for a great vacation to buy a used car. Boy, I tell you what, a great vacation. That'd be a really nice vacation for ten grand. Approximately one year's worth of work for the average human on Earth. And then $1 million uh, visualized here. Uh, it's not as a big a pile as you would think. A $1 million on $100 bills. Still, this is 92 years of work for the average human on Earth. Pretty amazing to think when you talk about in terms of, of around the whole world compared to the United States. Here's $100 million. Uh, plenty to go around for everybody. It's nicely into an ISO military standard size pallet. Uh, this couch is made from $46.7 million of $100 bills. Crispy, that is a, a designation there because in order to get them fit really nicely, they would have to be very crisp for sure. Wrinkled bills uh, take up a lot more space. I'm going to talk about that later on in this video in terms of gold. 
Um, but I like how Demonocracy visualizes this. Now, if we take $100 million and equals one year of work for about 3,500 average Americans, so that puts it into perspective. Uh, so here's the, uh, here are 2,000 people standing shoulder to shoulder, not social distancing, looking for a job. The Federal Reserve's mandate is to maintain price stability and low unemployment. The Federal Reserve prints money based on the assumption that increasing money supply will boost jobs. Failed experiment. That is part of mon modern monetary theory. Here we have $1 billion visualized. We can see here. Uh, you will need some help when robbing the bank. Interesting fact, $1 million weighs 10 kilograms exactly. That is interesting. You're looking at 10 tons of money on those pallets. Wow. So that gives you some perspective of what $1 billion looks like. And it's a lot, a lot, a lot of money for um, even a rich person in the United States or anywhere in the world. But in terms of government and government spending, not a big deal. And then here is a couple of million dollars going into a bottomless pit. That's $100 million on the forklift, uh, $2 billion on the truck trailer, and bulldozers pushing $1 billion in the global unsa uh, unsatisfiable black hole of greed. Now, that's kind of a generalization there, but uh, uh, one could say that this could be potentially money going to uh, inject liquidity into the... Uh, uh, the, the repo, the repurchase agreements to some of these uh, big banks. But nonetheless, uh, other than that, this part of the infographic is not really, doesn't say a whole lot other than just talking about greed. Here is what $1 trillion looks like. Wow, look at that. $1 trillion in those big pallets there. If you spend $1 million a day when Jesus was born, you would have not spent $1 trillion by now. So look at that. You would not have spent that much by now, but government can do it in a signing of a pen. Amazing. Uh, look at that. Crazy. Here is the White House. Some other, uh, well, I guess that's the entire White House, the West Wing and East Wing there. Fascinating indeed. Now, here's when we get into the $2 trillion emergency stimulus package by the U.S. government, otherwise known as the CARES Act. In response to the virus quarantine lockdown causing the U.S. and world economy to stop, the U.S. government has put together the biggest stimulus package in American history in order to help corporations and people escape the effects of quarantine. So $340 billion was a supplemental spending, which is for hospitals, veterans, public transport, etc., $221 billion is a variety of tax benefits for businesses. $150 billion for direct aid to states distributed by population size. $500 billion loans guaranteed for businesses, states, and municipalities. $349 billion loans to small business. $301 billion is direct payments to households. Now that's a relatively um, small number compared to the rest there, but nonetheless... I believe that was a mistake to do that, and I think the other things could have been handled differently. And uh, Silver Wolverine posted a video recently how, how much of that money went to dead people. Then $250 billion went for unemployment insurance, and uh, uh, $32 billion went to airlines. The $301 billion for direct payment to households, also known as UBI, or helicopter money, is only 15% of the entire rescue package. Also, this rescue package is just one of many. The vast majority of the package goes to bailout corporations, many of whom have done stock buybacks in recent years and now do not need, do not have the cash on hand needed to weather the financial standstill. The $500, $500 billion for guarantees of business also opens the door for government to take ownership stake in these failing businesses. The virus lockdown is unprecedented in modern history in terms of economic damage. Even during the war times, bars and factories remained open. In order for the virus to decrease world population of 7.8 billion people by 1% in one year each day, 210,000 people must die from virus-related illness. And so here and you can see what these different uh, categories look like in terms of stacks of cash there. Man. 
tell you, they actually have a video of this, but I think this uh, page shows it even better. And uh, so this is uh, talks about what has happened uh, and what's going on and what will happen. There are currently six major economic stimulus packages, which are money printing operations running as of May 2020. Seen to the right is a list and timeline. So on uh, in the September 10th, 2019, we had a 400 plus billion dollar bank bailout, liquidity infusion to keep banks from collapsing during New Year 2020. That is the repurchase agreements that we've talked about. And that was the first round of those. And uh, that, um, remember talking about that, the repos, uh, crazy what was going on there. You hardly hear anything about that on the news. Then on New Year, we had a $1.6 trillion bank bail bailout. Crazy. Quantitative easing so big a dwarf to 2008 financial crisis. And it's only April 2020. Uh, even Fed head uh, trader admits it's unparalleled. And uh, so, again, well, these are the, there's a range of dates here. The other dates are grayed out for some reason, but that started in from April, from uh, January to April. And so that was before the uh, the crisis or before the, the big shutdown. Well, and by April 14th, they had shut down, but that was there. Then we had the $4 trillion Fed bailout of whatever. And the Federal Reserve pledged to provide $4 trillion dollars in whatever stimulus in 2020 because of the virus. In other words, to infinity and beyond um, and change it to open-ended quantitative easing, which means in simple terms, print as much money as needed to avoid deflation and prevent the financial system from collapsing. Four trillion dollars is just a number on whatever it takes. Yes, crazy. That was in March of 2020, March 24th. Then on March 26th, we have the legislation, the rescue package, the four to two trillion dollar bailout. That's the one that made the biggest news. Um, pass into law. Then on the 9th of April, we had a 2.3 trillion Federal Reserve bailout for the U.S. economy for Main Street. Working people will get 500 billion dollars, while Wall Street and corporate America will get three times that amount. Then on the 21st of April, we had the $484 billion coronavirus funding bill. Who even cares or can keep up with the billions thrown left or right? We did uh, not add this to the graphic. We have re-rendered the graphic so many times because of Fed's inc releasing new stimulus and printing faster than we can update the graphics. What's $484 billion at this point? Uh, no one even notices. Truth is, is the whole list is even financed uh, is that the whole list is even above is even financed by the Fed. Even the government bailouts are financed by the Fed. Uh, there uh, would be very limited bailouts if there was no money and printer available, such as the Fed. So this is something else. It's really interesting to see, and it's scary. It really is scary um, what's going on. And to kind of give a background, the most famous stimulus package here we talked about the expansion was fueled by historically low interest rates and Fed printing stimulus, QE, where the Fed, in cooperation with the banks, increased the money supply by giving loans that were not by, by real savings. This requires continuous credit injection into the financial system. Since the 2008 crash, the underlying economy has never expanded with the stock market. Stocks, real estate, and investment prices climbed even higher. In fact, the stock market now is essentially being propped up by all this money. The banking system was already experiencing crisis events in September of 2019, with Federal Reserve injecting $412 billion in the banks, and banks can make it through Christmas of 2020, and then continued injecting money in 2020. Fed at first pretended the liquidity injection is not QE money printing, uh, which has pushed stocks into new all-time highs. 2019, before the virus lockdown started, a market legend predicted the 2020 stock crash. The virus lockdown was the catalyst, not the cause, which provided a good cover for all policymakers and politicians to blame the current global economic debt crisis on the virus. Truth is, is the Fed was already injecting vast amounts of money into the economy before the virus crisis started. And the virus is only the catalyst and the excuse while the global economic debt crisis has been brewing for decades. 
Now, not many noticed this financial crisis developed before the virus lockdown. That's very true. No one talked about it except for some of us here in this community and on some talk shows and what have you. But it was a big deal, a big problem. And uh, we can't just blame one person for this. We can blame a lot of people, a lot of politicians, a lot of uh, institutions. Uh, it uh, was doomed for uh, something to, uh, to happen and another recession. And, uh, you know, eventually we would have gotten there. And something's got to give somewhere, somehow, some way. Uh, will it be a dollar reset? Who knows? Some have uh, made uh, the proposition that perhaps Trump is uh, taking advantage of this now and that if he gets a second term, then he will uh, completely uh, reorganize the Federal Reserve. Um, and there was been talk, and I posted a video about how their involvement with the Federal Reserve and uh, kind of coming together uh, with the Treasury taking over essentially the Federal Reserve and, um, and what that could possibly mean. Uh, what's going on in Jackson Hole, Wyoming? Are they going to revalue the dollar? Um, is there going to be a new dollar, a dollar reset? And is that what is Trump is looking for with maybe gold being something as part of a rules-based monetary system to back, it, to back that up? The only one who's talked about that, I remember very specifically in 2016, it was Ted Cruz talked about that. And Ted Cruz was Donald Trump's major rival. They have since patched things up, and and uh, who knows with Ted Cruz's uh, knowledge, and um, this could be something that could possibly be happening in the in a second Trump term. We'll find out, and we shall see. But nonetheless, all this money. Look at the amounts of this that are out there. For the bank bailout, the uh, in 2020, all this money going out, the four trillion dollars Fed. And look at it compared to how much of this stuff is compared to these buildings here. Bank of America, Citibank, Goldman Sachs, HSBC, J.P. Morgan Stanley, Wells Fargo. Crazy. All of this stuff. And then we have the two, 2020 10 plus trillion hyperinflation stimulus package that gives you it in perspective here. And uh, it is quite telling. Look at this. Um, how much of that money is being printed down a row of these skyscrapers for sure. And if you take that money into a trillion dollars and a pillar of these all stacked up, look how tall that is. Insane. And what does that say here? There's a lot more in this infographic. It gives you a lot of information and detail here. I don't know that I agree with every single aspect of it, but I think it is something... The, just the economy of scale with all of this, uh, where it goes, it is just uh, something here. You lose count. It becomes just a big mechanism of, uh, of just, just all this money being printed out. Now that, compared to all of that money, all of that cash stacked up. By the way, a lot of this isn't printed cash. It's digitized. It's all digital. It's got to be backed by something, though. And the paper of it. So if you take that and you compare that to what it would be for gold that's mined in history, uh, this is a bit dated here. So you can add a little bit more to it, but not much. Um, you know, you talk about uh, all the gold mine in the world um, and uh, and what it would and the forms it would take. Well, like I mentioned earlier in the video about the hundred dollar bills being crisp. If there's any wrinkles at all between bills. Uh, that's going to take up a lot of space because I'm going to go down here to this. This is an unrealistic uh, representation of all the gold in the world. Um, and even dating back to its time, that if it were in a solid cube, it would be that much. Gold is a very dense metal. Uh, only platinum is denser. And uh, But all that gold packed in tight uh, would mean it would fill that much space. It's unrealistic because no one would ever... There's no way you could take all that gold and put it in uh, in that solid cube. By the way, that would be five nines pure gold too, because any of those impurities in there um, would be uh, would also take up a lot more space or enough more space that would not fit inside of this cube. And this is a more realistic representation. If all the gold in the world was was uh, recast into uh, 400 ounce bars, 
This is how, but and even in, it doesn't even come up to Lady Liberty's waist on the Statue of Liberty here. But this is probably more realistic representation of all the gold in the world. Uh, because the 400 ounce bar is a good delivery bar uh, for gold. And this gives a better representation of that uh, of that gold there. So, uh, and even so, there's not really not that much there. Gold, real money. And uh, it's money that just can't just be fabricated out of thin air. It takes a lot of work to uh, fabric fabricate uh, an ounce of gold. A lot of dirt and tons of material to go through to, to uh, process it, refine it, and then to mint it and pour it into those 400 ounce gold bars. What does that tell you? That tells you that the Bank of International Settlements, recognizing that gold is an, is an asset that is to be valued and has been for thousands of years, it is a tier one asset, making it on par or even above uh, any currencies in the world. If you hold gold, you are doing well. I would encourage all of my viewers to consider gold as an option to even diversify even above silver because central banks hold it. And I think these infographics tell us what's going on in the world today. You can't print your way out of money problems. We are engaged in a Hail Mary with all of this money printing. Something's got to give somewhere. And those who have gold will do better on the other side of whatever crisis may come. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'd like to extend a multitude of gratitude to you all for taking the time to watch and encourage you to please rate, share, comment, and subscribe.